When the sun's out, bathe in sunlight. But when the moon's out, bathe in moonlight. Hello folks, Tiso here. And today we are talking about Wu Tao, the 77th director of the Wangsheng Funeral Parlor. She is another pyro unit who's best suited as the main DPS. Her damage is on a similar league as Ganyu, Diluc, Klee, and Xiao. Wu Tao does more single target DPS than Diluc, but Diluc is easier to use against larger groups of enemies. In patch 1.3, Ganyu is still the strongest DPS for now. ReZero fans can finally rejoice since Wu Tao shares the same voice actress as Rem in English and Amelia in Japanese. She can be paired with a variety of support members, but some may require stricter timing and rotations to maximize her DPS. The biggest drawback is her high stamina consumption when doing her charge attack combo. She runs out of stamina as fast as Keqing's charge attack spam. In this free to play guide, I'll focus on her attack combos, abilities, gear, and team comps. So let's begin. Since her elemental skill does not do direct damage, most of her DPS will come from normal and charge attacks. Her animation for completing all the swings is adorable, but we will never see this in combat. Her highest damage combo while buff with her E is one normal attack into a charge attack. This is best against larger enemies that don't get knocked back. If you add in animation cancels, the DPS order will rank from normal 1 charge attack dash cancel, then normal 1 charge attack jump cancel, and then finally normal 1 charge attack by itself. Normal 1 charge attack means doing one normal attack into charge attack. You can do this by pushing the attack button once and holding it down until the charge attack comes out. The downside of her best combo is the stamina consumption. You will run out of stamina extremely fast unless you have her constellation 1. This means the best combo for most people would be just N1, charge attack, jump cancel. In addition to saving frames, you will also travel less, allowing your next normal attack to still reach the enemy. If you are really low on stamina, another combo is normal 3 into charge attack. This is her second highest damage combo and you should use it against smaller enemies that will get knocked back from the charge attack. Wu Tao's dash is also pretty unique. The startup animation lets you go through enemies. This is super helpful and can prevent you from being stuck in a corner with large enemies. I'm sure most of us have died at some point being trapped in a corner with larger enemies and can't get out. However, you cannot pass through inanimate objects like fences or ruin guard enemies. You can kind of pass through the regis vines, but they are too big to get to the other side. Her charge attack also behaves differently with and without her E buff. With the buff, she can cancel a normal attack in the charge attack extremely fast. Without it, her charge attack is not worth using. Her best combo without the buff will be 3 normal attacks into a dash cancel. But you should be using your support's abilities during this downtime instead of attacking with Wu Tao. Her elemental skill, Guide to Afterlife, is what upgrades Wu Tao into a walking nuke. She actually has the lowest base attack in the game, capping out at 106. This is much lower than Barbara, who used to hold the record for the lowest base attack. By using Guide to Afterlife, Wu Tao enters the Paramita Papilio state, which buffs her attack by a percentage of her max HP. This is why it's better to stack HP percentage instead of attack percentage on artifacts. Look at the difference in my attack with just mediocre HP artifacts. When you use this skill, you lose 30% of your current HP, but that's not really too bad. Her Ascension 4 passive will increase her pyro damage by 33% when she is below half health. She also has the highest HP and second highest defense in the game. The Paramita Papilio buff also converts all her attacks into pyro damage and makes her charge attack apply blood blossoms. These blossoms last 8 seconds and will tick pyro damage every 4 seconds. A normal application will only do damage twice. If you hit the same enemy with another charge attack, the blossom will last for 8 more seconds while the tick timer continues uninterrupted. When this buff ends or if you swap her out, her Ascension 2 passive will buff the crit rate of your party members. This provides even more incentive to use your other units while Wu Tao is waiting on her cooldowns. Let's look at how much damage she can do with proper supports. I will be increasing Wu Tao's damage with Bennett, Sucrose, and Xing Chou. Let's see how fast I can kill this plant with her normal 1 charge attack combo.
Not that bad. And my artifacts can still be improved by a lot. Just need to keep on farming those domains. Her elemental burst, Spirit Soother, is a large nuke with one of the shortest animations. Hitting enemies will restore a good chunk of health, which balances out the HP loss from her elemental skill. Let's focus on her HP here and see the difference in healing. You get the max healing when hitting 5 or more enemies. The healing and damage from her burst is also stronger when Wu Tao is under half health. Combining all these bonuses, you'll get the most damage from her burst when using it while buffed by her E and under 50% health. Let's see what kind of damage this burst can do. Yep, looks perfect to me. There are two main combos to increase Wu Tao's burst damage. The one just now uses Melt for the 2 times damage multiplier. I have Sucrose to give bonus elemental mastery and attack with the Dragon Slayer book, a level 1 Chongyun just to apply Cryo, and Bennett to give bonus attack. The other common combo is to use Vaporize. Sucrose and Bennett does the same thing, and I have Mona instead of Chongyun to apply Hydro. Mona's burst will also increase my damage with the Omen debuff. This rotation isn't optimal since I could've swapped Sucrose and Mona's weapon for more damage and increased Mona's burst to get higher bonus damage. But I kept this one anyway since I got the achievement to do over 20,000 damage. Better late than never. Now on to talents. You will want to level her normal attacks to level 6 first, then her skill and burst to level 6. After that, keep pumping normal attack until it's level 8. The next part depends on how you are using Wu Tao. If she is your main DPS and does the most damage with her normal and charge attack combos, then pump her E to level 8. If you prefer to use her as a nuker and play her as a burst support, then bring her Q to level 8 first. Then bring her normal attack to level 10 and repeat for her E and Q. Her Ascension 2 helps the rest of the party and incentivizes using your support while Wu Tao's E is on cooldown. Her Ascension 4 increases her damage a lot when her health is below half. Since she is currently the tankiest unit without shields, playing under half health won't be too scary. Here is a map from Reddit user KevinHF that shows farming routes for Wupa Flowers. You'll need plenty of these for Wu Tao's talents and character ascensions. Also, here are the Silk Flower locations in the game. You can purchase 5 flowers from Miss Bai in Qingqi village, as well as 5 flowers from Virgo Dead in the Wangshu Inn. Thank you Digit's Guide for the farming routes. Now on to her constellations. Once again, constellations for a 5 star is definitely not free to play friendly, so do not overspend. For those lucky enough to get multiple copies of Wu Tao, I'll let you know that her Constellation 1 is her strongest constellation if you effectively use her normal 1 charge attack combo. This lets you cancel the charge attack animation with a dash and still have enough stamina to repeat this combo until her E buff is gone. This is an excellent quality of life constellation, but if you don't have this, you can still jump cancel the charge attacks and still do very good damage. Constellation 2 is an okay bonus, but nothing too crazy. It will increase her damage a little and makes her more effective as a burst support. Constellation 4 increases the overall team's damage. It's a nice buff that will have really high uptime since the crit bonus lasts for 15 seconds, which is almost the same as the cooldown of Wu Tao's E. Her Constellation 2 lets her burst apply blood blossoms, so you'll be able to keep this crit buff as long as there are enemies dying. Constellation 6 is a weird one. I can see this being used for speedruns by maximizing crit damage similar to Xin Yan's Constellation 2. The survivability part is also nice but not game changing. This constellation is best in very specific scenarios, but generally, it is one of the weakest C6 among the 5 star units. Now on to her weapons. I'll be going over the free to play weapons first, then the remaining gacha polearms. Since we are almost 6 months into this game, I will start including the shop weapons as free to play. 
This makes her best free-to-play weapon, the Black Cliff Pole. The craftable pole arms that increase physical damage is useless for Hu Tao, and the prototype Star Glitter is not as strong due to the energy recharge substat. The third best free-to-play weapon will be the 3 star White Tassel. The crit is more beneficial than the normal attack passive since her best combo uses only one normal attack per rotation. For her gacha weapons, the best one is the Undisputed Staff of Homa. The passive scales with HP, which is perfect for her natural stats. This staff is pretty much designed just for her. The next best weapon is a toss-up among the Primordial Jade Spear, Deathmatch, and Dragonsbane. Dragonsbane is the best polearm if you are running a vape team with Xing Chou. Outside of that team, Dragonsbane won't be nearly as good. Between Deathmatch and the Jade Spear, Deathmatch is stronger until you reach max stacks with the Jade Spear. Since Wu Tao does not do well when not buffed by her E, she will have a hard time maintaining max stats with the Jade Spear. Personally, I will give the Jade Spear to another unit and let her use Deathmatch which is better suited in more situations. The next best weapon after all these is once again the Black Cliff Polearm. At max stats, it rivals Deathmatch, but it's hard to maintain all three stacks in most situations. For now, the Lithic Spear isn't that good. There are no Li Yue units that can use the Viridescent Venera set to increase Wu Tao's pyro damage. This spear has the potential to be stronger as we get more characters, but it seems too restrictive at the moment. Wu Tao's artifacts can have plenty of variety. You will definitely need an HP percentage timepiece, pyro damage goblet, and a crit helmet. Your weapon and artifact substats will determine if crit rate or crit damage is better. You will want your crit rate to crit damage ratio to be about 1 to 2. Since we only use one piece with HP percentage main stat, we will not have to worry about the 400% attack cap with her elemental skill. The substats you want to prioritize is crit, HP percentage, elemental mastery, then attack percentage. Most of her team comps utilizes pyro reactions, so elemental mastery is better than attack percentage, especially when Wu Tao has the lowest base attack in the game. When comparing attack percentage to flat attack, you will get more benefits from attack percentage when your weapon is around level 60 or higher. The best set for her is the 4-piece Crimson Witch. Even though you won't maximize her 4-piece bonus, it is still better than the 2-piece bonus from the other sets. If you can't farm 4 good pieces of Crimson Witch, then go with 2-piece Crimson Witch, with 2-piece Wanderer, Noblesse, or Gladiator. There are also 2 niche sets. If you run a mono pyro team with Anemo or Geo supports, then 4-piece Lava Walker ends up being pretty effective. However, with this team, you will need your supports to handle the pyro slimes and shields. The other niche set is a 4-piece Thundering Fury. This will require a team with Fischl and another Electro unit. Speaking of these niche artifact sets, let's talk about her team comps for those and the more common sets. One of the stronger Electro teams to utilize the 4-piece Thundering Fury will be Fischl, Beidou, and either Bennett or Xing Chou. When using Xing Chou, the Electro charged enemies will keep an Electro debuff, allowing you to still benefit from the 4-piece Thundering Fury. Wu Tao's more common team comps will include Xing Chou for all the vaporized damage, Shangling or Bennett for Pyro application, and Sucrose with 4-piece Venera to reduce Pyro resistance and buff Elemental Mastery. Another strong team is Xing Chou for Vaporize, and a mix of C2 Chongyun, Kaya, or Diona. Here's a video of someone using this team on floor 12. This team will let Wu Tao always proc Vaporize or Melt. With enough energy recharge on the supports, you can keep their burst rotation for a long time. If you don't like managing too many elements, you can always replace any of the healers with Zhong Li for his shields and resistant debuff, or just run two Geo units with Wu Tao and Xing Chou. There are a lot of team varieties with Wu Tao, but the strongest ones always include Xing Chou because his burst allows all of her charge attacks to be vaporized. You won't be able to do the same with Melt since her pyro attack gauge will remove the weaker cryo gauge. Maybe I will talk more about these elemental gauge units in the future. For now, this is the end of my Wu Tao guide. She is an incredible DPS if you don't already have Duluk, Klee, or Ganyu. I'm having a lot of fun with her playstyle and her cheerful voice lines. If you manage to pull her, let me know how you think she ranks as a 5 star. As always, thanks for watching and have fun out there, traveler.